more in the quick change die saga. So now I've got all of my tenons cut and all my plates cut, which I didn't show. It's just a long boring process of setting up um, a horizontal to continue to do the same cut again and again. I uh, deburred them all. Now they gotta go together and I'm gonna have to weld them together. So I could just set them up individually or I could waste a lot of time and make a jig. So we're working on making a jig. Right now I'm gonna tap the second hole. And I guess this one's gonna go onto IGTV and be all sideways. And it's also gonna be on my YouTube, so. Bah. I prefer the spiral flute taps because they pull the chips up and out and you're less likely to get them compacted or, or blocked up in your, uh, in your flute of the tap. And that's usually when you break a tap is actually when you have too much chips stuck in there. But that one's not long enough. So now we're gonna go through with a longer tap and clear the rest of the way. Feed it in easily so you don't cross thread it. Let the machine do its work. Gotta watch it really closely and you can't see it, but with my other hand, I'm flipping the switch at a certain point, right about there. Takes a while to get used to that. Um, I've broken a lot of taps learning how to do this. That's just par for the course. Gotta crack some eggs and make an omelet. So how this is gonna work, is, as you can see, I had I did another hole, two other holes over there. So how this is gonna work is I'm gonna have a couple stoppers, or uh, you know, hard stops, that's what I would call them, in, um, in each hole, and when I go to set up for welding, what I can do now, and this is based off the old die, is this is set right here to the height of the middle of the die, and I can press both in and up against my stopper here, like so. Forward, forward again, it hits both stop points. So now I know that I'm exactly, as long as I put everything set up and I clamp it like this, I'll be in the same spot again and again. So that's kind of handy. I guess I could have used a smaller screw here or bolt or come out a little further, but I think I still have enough room to weld. And since I'm not really planning on removing these bolts anyway, I don't really care. They're just meant to be stoppers. So that's how that'll work. And so like now I'll be able to do two on one plate because of uh, I have two set up. So say on this one, the actual one we'd be using, how it'll look is I'll, and I'll probably clamp this all together, is I'll push a plate up in the back like this. And so can't see it right now. I guess I don't need this one. That's sitting flat flush against there. And then I have my tenon and I just have to make sure that the correct side, which would be the smaller side over here, goes in towards. Now, as long as both of those are touching this, as I clamp it together, it's exactly where I want it to be. I could even clamp it together and take it off and weld it elsewhere, and I could just use this to clamp it together. Um, that kind of would have been smart. I'm doing it, I'm gonna put it this way, and I'm gonna um, clamp them together, and then I'm going to go in the other room and weld them, and we're gonna do that in a minute here. All right, we're gonna do a little welding. We're gonna weld a couple pieces of the jig together um, so we can do a repeatable setup and bust these guys out and we'll see how it works. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work good, so. When you're welding jigs, you just wanna tack them decently in a couple spots because if you weld too much, then, and you made a mistake, you gotta go back and fix it or change it, you have a lot of grinding. So I just did um, these two tacks, that'll hold it from moving, that's all we need.
Next, we're gonna weld in our jig we made earlier, and this is gonna what's this is what's gonna space off the uh, tenons from the plates in the correct position. Um, one thing to consider is you don't want to put it too tight together because then you won't be able to change out material if there's a variance between thicknesses of material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up here with my main size plates that I'm going to use. I'm probably never going to use any plates bigger than this and I can always grind it off and change it if I have to. But generally I'm going to use these size plates or smaller. So I'm going to put them in there where they would go, just like that. like that one is, right? So it's gonna, supposed to look something like that. So you can see the screws holding it off. And then this one would be where the tenon goes, something like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to space this off, like I said. So if I had it all the way tight like that, that's great. And I could line it up but it's still not gonna hold this in place where it's supposed to be. So what I need to do is I need to make it variable. So I'm going to first put both my plates in how I want them, and then I'm just gonna use this scale as a spacer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this scale in there. And, and as I can test that, I clamp it in, it should give me enough room. You know, I could go even a little bigger. I'm gonna use this as a spacer. Just put that back in the back. Put it all together. Take a clamp. Give them the clamp. Line it up basically where I want it to be. So that will provide enough room to come in and out. Now I'm just going to give it, a, like I said, a couple tacks. Nothing major because we want to be able to grind it apart if we have to. Um, so let's do that. Like I said, nothing major, just a couple tacks. Now when I open this up, I'm going to put these guys in there right away, right where they go. No big deal. And these are all welded together to my fixture plate now. So as you can see, they're not gonna move. So now, how is this gonna work? Well, I'm gonna put one plate in, two plates in, and I'm gonna have two tenons ready to go here. Make sure I have the right side up. I'll get this more organized when I'm actually ready to do it and kinda of go into production because I could weld the tenon upside down and that would be really bad. So, um, oops, sorry. So what I want is I want to make sure that my tenon has the fat part coming out towards me. I don't know if you can see that, but one side's skinnier than the other, right? That's what we've been talking about this whole time. Are you paying attention? So that's where they're supposed to go. Now I have another piece of angle iron, and this is the part that does not get clamped. So it'll just go like so. And for that, I'm just going to use the clamps, the C clamps, on the side. And I probably only need one. So the angle iron is pretty straight, just make sure it's nice and flat when I do it. Make sure everything's touching what I want it to touch, the whole point. And then snug it up. So. Everything is snug as a bug in a rug. Sorry for the shakiness. So everything's all snugged up. Let's take a closer look here. As you can see, I have a seat clamp and you can kind of see those pins right there. And that one right there, that's actually what is gonna be locating exactly where I want these to, welds to be recreated. So now, you know, if I ever wanna make more of these, which I don't know if you can see this whole stack of the ones I've already been working on. I think we're at 24 now. Ugh, do I need 24 dies? Yeah, I need 24 dies. Um, then I'll be able to repeat this process fairly simply. Just like I'll be able to make more die plates simply. Well, that's the easy part. I'll be able to make more tenons simply. 
all this, all of this work I've been doing is really aimed at making things easier in the future. So now let's weld one together and see how it turns out. Cool part about this setup is I can move it around and weld wherever I want. So um, let's see, how can you see? Can you see? You can see. Uh, you can see that corner. I'll weld that corner. How about that? You know what? Let's, uh, let's put the phone in danger. But, uh, you know, if you know me, if you know my channel, you know I don't really care about that. Uh, you know, that's what insurance is for. And let's get a good shot of welding one of these. So I'm going to weld this inside corner right here. It's getting nice and close. So I'm gonna try to weld that corner in there without totally getting in your way. Um, we'll see how it goes. Not my best weld, but you know, you gotta see it, hey? So I'm gonna weld the other ones up real quick and I noticed something, it's a bit of a problem. I actually kind of welded to my jig and it was because I wasn't really paying attention. I was trying to, you know, show off for the gram. So uh, I'm gonna weld the rest of them up and um, pop it out and we'll see how it looks. So there's one and you can see that it is pretty much right where it's supposed to be. Let's take a farther look back at it here. Compare it to our other ones. So if we look at it, it's pretty much right where it needs to be. So that's the first of many quick change dies I've done. Um, and hopefully, yeah, if we look at it, it looks pretty good, you know? Looks like it all lines up pretty much where it's supposed to be. Look at them side to side. Ah, sorry for the shaky camera. It's really hard to do all this all on iPhones and stuff, you know? So that's, uh, that's it for this one. Um, and yes, you're probably wondering, I did weld this guy together right here. In the beginning, I kind of got a little tack in there, but you know, we can knock them out. Probably knock out pretty easily. It's gonna be loud though. Hey, look at that, no big deal. No big deal, I'll just fix that weld. And uh, either way, both of our tenons came out exactly how we wanted them to, exactly in the right spot. And so now, when I'm doing the next 24 of them, I'll be able to just pop it in there, tighten them up, and uh, weld away. I might just use it to, um, instead of actually welding right there, I might uh, like cut out a hole so I have a little extra room in case you know I, I tack it together again or I might just bring a hammer with me and bang it out if I happen to give it a small tack in there. Generally, I only tacked it because I was trying to make it look cool for you guys and uh, you know I wasn't really in a good position to see what I'm doing. Welding's always being about com being comfortable and being in a good position and, and you know being able to see what you're doing. So when you're standing behind a phone, it's a little harder. But no excuses, it still works, who gives a shit? Um, all right, that's it for you know round two of uh, making quick change dies. We actually have a set now. We have the quick change die plates done. So that'll go in the press and it's correct. See how it has that angle on it? Oh, that's so cool. Can you tell? It's an angle. So the set screw will lock into that angle and hold it in place. And then whatever die shape I put on there will go up and down or stay in the bottom. So that's, you know, that's the whole goal here. Once again, I would strongly recommend just calling Cole Ironworks and having them make them and buy them from them. But if you happen to have all the equipment I have and you like to waste your weekend and not make Damascus, then uh, you can do what I do and be an idiot. So to all my other idiot friends out there, good night.